What do you make of this? Some call it hype, some call it panic and worry, some call it just investigative journalism. What do you make of some of the encounters that people seem to be having with Bing? So I think there's two things to keep in mind when you have a disturbing encounter with one of these chatbots. You can worry that the chatbot itself is malevolent or sinister, or you can take a step back and see that the real issue is that people might be taking it as something that has communicative intent and can be trying to convey meaning, when in fact, when the output of a chatbot seems to make sense, it's because we're the ones making sense of it. It has no meaning, it has no mind, it's just spitting back language based on the patterns in its training data. So it's a reflection of us in some ways. What then could Microsoft be doing to better educate us on that? So I think there's some design choices that could be made. The fact that they have this machine speaking with the first person is problematic because that really encourages people to see it as an entity, as a mind when it's not. Um, and the second thing I think is to really think about when is it appropriate to allow synthetic text out into the world? Um, do you want, as a company, to take responsibility for the confabulations of these chatbots? In many ways, they've tried to highlight the limitations. The fact also this is kind of in beta, it's, it's pre being worked through the original few people who have been selected to work with it in a preview format. Do you think ultimately it's embedding in search is a good thing? I really don't. I think that, that chatbots are not what we need for search. They might be what we think we want. We've been trained by decades of science fiction to imagine that there's a future where there's an all-knowing computer that we can just ask questions of and get the answers. But in fact, what I learned from my colleagues in the information school is that what we really need when we have an information need is a system that will help us find information sources, but give us those sources directly so that we can evaluate them and also progressively increase our own information literacy. There is a startup, actually, we've interviewed Neva, who always sort of tells you where the information is originally from. Could that be an easy fix, do you think, ultimately, a way in which that brings transparency of where the information is arising? It depends a lot on the design of the system. So if the system is we're going to go get some documents and then produce a summary with pointers to those documents, that's better, although those summaries can still have very strange artifacts in them and people aren't always going to go double check in the source documents. Mm. If, on the other hand, it's we're going to prevent this, present this answer and then, oh, by the way, generate some citations, those ones can be fake and made up and not where the information is really coming from. And so that absolutely doesn't solve the problem. You're putting out a lot of research. You're also putting out a fair few takedowns on various platforms, social media ones. Professor, is anyone coming to you for advice from these companies? You know, surprisingly few. Um, I do sometimes get people asking me if I can help them design their system. Um, usually that request comes as if I would do it for free instead of as a consultant, so my answer is no. Um, but I really do hope that by putting information out there, both in published research and in my social media activity, I'm helping people ask these questions for themselves and take a critical view of so-called AI technology. What about a critical view coming from the government? From, is that where we should be having some of the monitoring? I think we really do need to develop some good regulations as a society. What guardrails do we want on this technology? What do we want to allow in terms of massive collections of data, in terms of systems that can just output text that we might encounter and not know that it was synthetic? There's a real risk to pollution of our information ecosystem. And I think that that's a societal concern that demands societal action. Coming from the UK, I've seen sort of discussions being brought from private and public partnership basis. They've tried to have government involved from an early day. Do you think ultimately some of the viewpoints from innovation can be heard at the same time as having the guardrails that are necessary, particularly from an ethics perspective? I think we do want to have a broad conversation as we're designing regulations. And we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where you can't build anything new. On the other hand, I think that we also need to be able to say before something is put out into the world, even as beta, um, what requirements do we have about um, transparency about how it's been evaluated so far, transparency about where its data comes from, and so on. And I think that there's a, there is a happy medium to be found there. Um, and it is one that is probably best served by having a broadly educated public so that we can all contribute to this discussion.